The last days of the war were very strange and scary. The Germans were moving out. You saw burned pieces of paper in the air. They were burning the records, all the different things that they had done. And you heard their cards leaving. I was 10 years old at that time. I climbed one of the wooden walls to see what's going on, what's going on. I heard a tremendous explosion. They were throwing hand grenades. My father said, we must find shelter. And we went into this dark, filthy basement. And a few other persons came down. They were scared to one had a little candle. And it felt like it illuminated a whole world. And we thought, as long as we have a flicker of light, maybe something will get better. The light to shine to a new light. Here, I keep many memories from my life. Please use your voice. Look around and ask me about what you see. My name is Inga Auerbacher. I look forward to our conversation and answering your questions. For now, let's begin at the beginning. Tell me about the beginning. I was very fond of my grandma. I called her Oma in German. She was a wonderful, wonderful lady. She came from a very large family, 14 children. And she gave me the most precious gift when I was two years old, my doll. Marlene. I found out much later that the model's name was actually Inga. I never knew that. But I, my mother, for instance, she loved movie stars, and my doll had blonde hair, blue eyes, and she showed me an album. And there was one lady who had these features, a blonde hair, blue eyes, and I said, Mommy, what, who is that lady? He said, Marlene Dietrich. So for the rest of my life, my doll was called Marlene. And she meant the world to me. I was an only child. And she became my sister, my best friend, my everything for the rest of my life. Tell me about your terrible journey. One morning, when I was seven, my grandmother, my parents, and I received our orders for transport. I was now number 13-1-408, a person without any citizenship. My parents and I were shipped out by passenger train to the Terezin concentration camp in Czechoslovakia. Terezin was an old military town sealed off from the outside world, surrounded by deep water trenches, high brick walls, wooden fences, and barbed wire patrolled by Nazi guards. Freedom was so nearby, you could almost touch it, you could almost feel it, and yet so far away, there was absolutely almost no chance to get out. Who was the stranger you'll never forget? 
During those big deportations in 1944, everybody ran around in the camp with a number around their neck for the next transport. And one day I'm walking one of the streets and a man was almost crazed. And he came to me with a box, also perhaps similar to my memory box here, and said to me, take this box. It's something to remember me by. And I opened it and I saw some knitted things, some threads, colorful threads in it actually a lousing solution. We all had lice and a few other things. He wanted to be remembered. It was so important for him that he just wasn't here on this earth. He had no clue that perhaps in a few days he would not be alive anymore. And that is the memory of him. And perhaps my memory box will do the same. Whoever is listening in or seeing it, ask questions. Look at my pictures. Look at my things that I'm showing you. It's very important. I also want to be remembered one day. Tell me about the moment of liberation. Tell me about the moment of liberation. The last days of the war were very strange and scary. It was dark and we prayed. I never prayed so hard in my life seeing those letters of the Hebrew language in my mind being illuminated. And somehow late in the evening, somebody decided to go up and the shine of this candle showed him the way up. It shone the way to freedom. We were finally liberated from Terezin on May 8th, 1945, by the Soviet army. You would think to be liberated would be a very joyous celebration. But you start to think about the whole story. Where are we going to go now? What are we going to do? Where are all our relatives? What's next? As a survivor, I feel a special obligation to tell my story, to keep the voices, especially of the children, alive. Because every person who hears it becomes an ambassador for those murdered people. I speak all over the world, all through Germany, all through America. My solution is we must live together and break the terrible stigma of genocide, hatred, one race against another. We are all God's children. And when you look up there, you can think of the memory of the yellow star. But I turn this symbol into something different that all people in the world are stars. Each one has something special to give to the world. And when I go to a school, uh, at the end, the children learn to say, I am a star and so am I.